And that's it. The last brush stroke in this drawing, well, painting or mixed media image. Everything you see was created with traditional media and it all started with some paper, some pencils, Copic markers, and a little bit of paint acrylic white. And that's how things get started. Clean surface and then put down a drawing. And once the drawing is complete, I first like to go in and lay things out with Copic markers and build up those tones. Now here I'm going in with a warm number five. You also see me using warm number three and warm number seven, and occasionally just a zero, which is basically just a marker loaded with alcohol. And I use that to pull the color back out again. That's what I'm doing to create those little dots there, which will later cause the ink to separate from that part. But instead of focusing on the drawing from this point on, instead I'd like to tell you a story and talk about kind of what you're seeing here, what this piece is about. The lore of the Norse folk begins, as so many stories do, in darkness. A darkness so great that it was named Gnungen Gap, the Great Void. Within that void, there was a collision of cosmic proportions as the realms of ice and fire collided, creating the first rivers, and out of those rivers came the first being, Ymir. Ymir was the first giant. All Jotuns and their kin are descended from him. The gods, too, burst from the sweat of Ymir's armpit, so in a way, Odin and his ilk are also descended from Ymir, as are all things. Odin and his brothers carved up Ymir to create Midgard, or as we would call it, Earth. Ymir's flesh was the Earth. The ocean his blood, his bones became hills, and his hair the trees. Out of his skull the sky, and his brains the clouds. But before all of that, Ymir was the first, a primordial being whose name in Old Norse means screamer. Out of nothing emerges sound, the first scream of creation, a sound that we all make as we enter this world. Ymir, the screamer in the void, like many other stories about the dawn of creation, the Vikings understood that existence begins with sound. Ha! What a story! When I was asked to do a drawing that interpreted the first giant Ymir, I was excited. I love giants, and I love to research Norse lore. So that's exactly where I started, digging into various texts on Ymir. Upon learning that Ymir's name meant Screamer, I knew I wanted to show him as a cosmic giant with the very energy of the Ganungan Gap leaking from his eyes and mouth in the moment that he lets out his first scream. Ah! With a concept in mind and my research complete, I start sketching in my sketchbook. For this phase, I like to listen to music. I have a playlist full of thematic scores from movies and video games that help put me in the perfect headspace for creation. After a couple of sketches, I bring an image I like into Photoshop where I continue to sketch digitally. Once that works out, I transfer the sketch onto paper and get to work. At the start of this video, you got to pick up on the action after the base drawing was down on the paper, right before going in to Copic Marker. One of the features I like about the markers is their brush tips. The Copic sketch markers have a brush side and a chiseled side. Both are useful, of course, but I find myself relying more on the brush. It's not exactly like using a real brush with bristles and paint, 
but the movements are similar, so any skills you have from using a brush can transfer from one medium into marker. After building up the base tones in marker, I use black Prismacolor pencils to detail the drawing. I start with a very thin pencil, which has a thinner black core than the typical colored pencil that you get from Prismacolor. I find this feels more like drawing with a regular pencil in lead than the more waxy feel that you get from regular Prismacolor pencils. Of course, Prismacolor pencils, and really all colored pencils, are wax, so that makes sense, but the thick colored pencil can put down too much wax for my taste, especially if you use it early on. I do still use regular Prismacolor black and white, but I save that for final areas that I know that need to be extra dark or light, respectively. All right, enough art materials talk. Let's get back to Ymir. I'm not sure why exactly, but I imagine a primordial being like Ymir to have horns. Perhaps it goes back to my own influences, the way other artists have depicted giants in the past, those images that have burned deep within my own psyche. Or maybe it's just that I love drawing twisted horns, so I will come up with whatever excuse I can to work them into my drawings. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it's all of those things. But what I do know is that two horns was not enough. I tried a couple versions with more simple horns, and Ymir just needed more. In my mind, he needed lots of horns, not just growing from his head, but also growing from his shoulders. In addition, he needed a proper beard. I mean, what sort of self-respecting first being doesn't have a beard? Working on Strathmore toned gray mixed media paper is a joy for this sort of project. First off, it's sturdy, so it holds the wetness of the markers just fine. Actually, part of why I like the markers is because the pigment is suspended in alcohol, and when the alcohol dries, it doesn't warp the paper the way that water media tends to. The downside is that the markers go on dark and dry light. For this reason, I typically start with lighter colors and build up. Just feels less risky to me. What's so great about gray tone paper is the push and the pull. You get to add darks and you get to add lights. I save the lights for last. There's something so magical about the final layer of acrylic white paint that just pops off the page, contrasted by all the mid and dark tones. I try to use the whites sparingly, but sometimes I just can't help myself. They really are fun. Well, that's about it. The drawing is very close to finish, and it almost looks like it did in the first clip you got to see at the beginning of this video. I first off want to thank Jordan for commissioning this drawing. It was his inspiration that fueled the whole project. I love working on commissions, especially when the commission is so in tune with my own aesthetic and interests. I'd also like to thank all the fine folks who support my work over on Patreon. It is because of people like them that I get to make cool stuff like this. If you made it this far, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure I'll get around to making more videos over here real soon. If you'd like your own print of Ymir, Screamer in the Void, go to FatefulSigns.com or just click the link in the description down below. Thanks.